favorite woods. One of my favorite wood species is definitely oak. And more precisely, white oak. But I thought, you know what, I don't know that much about white oak. Why do I think white oak is superior to red oak? Well, I know a couple of reasons, but I don't know. Let's explore this a little bit. Let's, let's find out some cool stuff about oaks, and specifically white oaks. I've kind of made it my mission this past year to identify all of our wood species on the property um, and catalog them and kind of learn more about them. Okay, so here we have some oak leaves. So for the longest time, I thought that we had primarily red oak until I learned a very simple fact about the difference between red oak and white oak. And one of those uh, you can look at are the leaves. Okay, this right here is a white oak. You see how, how it's kind of rounded, the lobes? Now let's find ourselves a red oak. See how this leaf is kind of pointed? It has like little points there. That's a red oak tree. White oak, red oak. It's so simple, right? So I always thought red oak was called red oak because the, the wood was more reddish. But the name actually comes from the fact that the, the red oak leaves turn red in the fall and the white oak leaves do not. They become more like brownish, yellowish. Now, if you, like me, are a child of the 90s, your perception of oak may be quite negative. Because you remember those kitchen cabinets and you think, no, I don't like oak. And you think about those kind of yellowish, reddish. I always kind of had the worst opinion of oak, but, but oak as well, until I started woodworking. This is a piece of of flooring actually, white oak flooring, which is what I have on the floor here. Um, and here you can see these beautiful kind of quarter sawn um, ridges. I think it's also called like tiger oak in some furniture. It has this kind of really interesting quality. So when you look around in, in this space right here, all the molding um, is white oak because it's all flooring <laughs> that I used for windowsills and like I have my shop cart here. This is white oak as well. This is also white oak. This one I can sometimes find some interesting information in. Now obviously when you think about the difference between red oak and white oak, I mean there's a couple of things that come to mind. Red oak, white oak. So red oak, I mean, they're both relatively affordable in terms of hardwood. Red oak is cheaper, right? Um, white oak is a little bit harder, a little bit more durable. Let's put the Jenka scales. White oak is waterproof. It's been used by boat builders for, <laughs> for centuries. It has a much more resilient kind of quality. Red oak actually has these kind of open pores that will just like suck the water through. So that's one way to kind of look at it. <laughs> um, white oak has a slightly different color tone to it, a little bit more tan grayish, I would say, whereas the red oak has a bit more kind of salmonish undertone going towards the yellow when finished. Oh, the smell. Sometimes I've experienced when working with red oak that it has a really weird smell. Not a great smell. I have never experienced that with white oak though. Not always with red oak either, but sometimes. Occasionally a weird smell with red oak. White oak can actually be used for outdoor furniture since it is so water resistant. The look when quarter sawn. Now this is one reason why people love white oak. Um, when you quarter sawn it, sometimes you can get those kind of flecks of like shining. It's actually been called tiger oak. Now red oak can occasionally also have that pattern when quarter sawn, but not as pronounced and not as frequently. I always find it really difficult to tell whether it's a white oak or a red oak by the look of the tree. But this right here is a red oak. And that right there is a white oak. I don't know about you, but I, I always find it rather difficult to identify a lot of trees by the bark. There's so many of them that are so similar to each other, unless you're talking about, you know, beech or something very distinctive. The bark on a red oak is supposed to be less deep kind of ridges. So here we have a white oak. I mean, this bark is definitely more on the wider side. Now, remember how I said that white oak is supposed to not have red leaves, red oaks? Well, this looks kind of red to me on its way to turning red. And this is a white oak, so I don't know. 
So we're, we're working on this, this piece of furniture and it's a kitchen island and for the legs, beautiful chunky legs, we're using red oak. Now I have nothing against red oak, but I don't love the, the color, the finish of it. So what I like to do when I use red oak is to stain it. And this actually works really well for this project because the top is cherry and then we're do, doing kind of a gray stain for the, the, the base of it. And that, I love the, the dark gray stain on red oak. I think it is a, a great look. So when I think about trees and wood, there are so many aspects to it that you can go into. As a woodworker, you think about the quality of the wood itself, right? Then of course you have the bark and the acorns and the leaves. And they all have different properties too, right? Acorns. A nice collection of acorns. So you may think to yourself like, okay, <laughs> she crazy, why is she collecting acorns? Well, acorns are kind of cool because they contain a lot of tannins. Actually, the bark of the oak tree contains tannins, the leaves. So tannins are very useful when you dye fabric. So you can create cool dyes with this and also prepare fabric ahead of time to be dyed with other plants. Now, obviously you look at this acorn and I think, okay, dyeing material. Well, you can also, you know, eat these. <laughs> I don't know what the difference is between eating red oak acorns or white oak acorns. And I haven't been able to really identify the difference either in the way they look. Um, I know that either way you need to get rid of the tannins and that's what I'm looking for when I create a dye. So you need to get rid of the tannins because those are that's poisonous. And then once you do that, basically by boiling and creating dye baths, um, then they use the acorns like to turn it into flour and stuff. Like personally, I think it seems a little bit too much trouble, <laughs> more trouble than it's worth. These are annoying to, uh, to deal with, um, but it's kind of cool, right? I would love to try what an acorn cake tastes like or acorn bread. In terms of acorns, I was learning some things. Apparently, oak trees don't produce acorns until they're at least 50 years old. So it takes a while for them to get established. And then they grow a long time. Like they may live to two, 300 years, but I think there's been samples or examples of oak trees like living up to like 600 years, something like that, really, really long. You know, one of those really old, old beautiful looking oak trees. Native Americans apparently used oak trees for a lot of different things. They used the acorns for food, and then they used the bark and the leaves and the acorns for like medicinal properties as well. The Iroquois made a decoction of the bark and served it as a drink to treat loneliness. They also brewed a decoction of white oak bark as witchcraft medicine to remedy when your woman goes off and won't come back. <laughs> of course, when you think about oak, um, there's not just one species or two species. There's not just red oak and white oak. There's a lot of different types of oaks within those categories. Lately, another thing I've been kind of really become interested in is bonsai trees because I love the concept of trees and I love the idea of miniature versions of them and just seeing something grow. So I've been, I've been um, digging up saplings that we have growing on the property. We got so many saplings and trees, it needs to be cleaned out anyway. Here's like a little maple one. Um, so I thought let's go out and try to find an oak one and let's make a little oak bonsai tree. Right here we have some kind of little white oaks growing. I just have a small shovel. Oh, this ground is nice and soft. Amazed by the fact that you can dig out little trees and then hopefully turn them into little plants. Oh, got my poor old white oak tree, which I hope I didn't kill completely in that fight. I got a fair amount of roots. Finish with a little of our wax polish. Uh, this is our mineral oil wax polish that I always put on metal to prevent rust. So this is hardly a bonsai pot, but... <laughs> course what you're looking for in a situation like this is you don't want a stem that's too thin. That's why you want to start out with a tree that's a little bit older. And this tree is probably, the sapling here, what is it, maybe three years old? Something like that? I don't know exactly. But success for me would be that it survives. <laughs> I must say though I love the idea 
of over time making your own little indoor kind of woods. <laughs> Let this grow and then if it gets a bit of a bend later on I can always uh, get a better pot later and repot it, replant it and hopefully yeah. So if you have a piece of wood and you're like hmm is this red oak or white oak one way that you might be able to figure that out is to see what the pores are like. So we get two pieces of oak right here one is red one is white. Um, if I blow on this one basically nothing comes through that's because this is white oak that's why it's watertight because there's no open pores throughout. This on the other hand is red oak so what if we do it with that? You know, the paper maybe wasn't the best idea, but you can actually feel it with your hand. And I guess the same thing if you did water, maybe you could use that as a straw. So there is like the flow will go right through the red oak of air, water, whatever, whereas it doesn't on the white oak, which is why this is more insect resistant um, and just, you know, waterproof. That's why you can make boats out of this, but not out of this. But look at these in colors. Interesting, huh? This this is the white oak. It's a little bit darker and this is the the red oak. It's a little bit lighter So when I think about what white oak is really great for I particularly think about kind of um, Portable furniture. This is the writing box. I have writing utensils in here and this is uh, white oak and First of all white oak with box joints is my favorite because it looks so great. Here's another box this has a lot of leather tools in it. This is also white oak. It looks really gorgeous next to the walnut. Such a nice contrast. I think actually walnut and oak is a great kind of combination if you're looking for contrast. Um, and here's another box. Oh, this is beautiful. This is a white oak and it has that quarter sawn um, look to it. Um, but what I was going to say is I think white oak is a great uh, material for like, you know, furniture that you kind of use. That's why traditionally they were used for like you know, campaign furniture and boxes and stuff that you were traveling with if you needed a book box. If you were really wealthy and, you know, you were traveling to, you know, overseas or on a train and you ordered, you know, your local carpentry shop to, to make you like a box for your books. Most likely they would have used white oak because it is really durable. Um, it's waterproof. Um, you know, it's a great wood for that. Plus it's so strong. I was just looking around to see if I had any anything made, made in red oak to kind of contrast. Not really, except from the, front, the piece we're working on uh, right the second. That's red oak. In the bench in that shop, the legs are red oak for that as well. So it's a great wood, just not quite as nice as, as white oak. Remember, the simplest way to identify it is smooth lobes compared to pointy lobes on the leaves. That is if there are leaves on the tree at that point in time, which is not always the case. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if you have any comments, thoughts, questions, whatever in, in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks to our patrons. If you want to support this channel, support the kind of videos that I make, encourage me to uh, continue and do more of these. I love doing them. Uh, then there are basically two really great ways. Well, I guess three great ways. Uh, the first way is just to watch the videos and share them and comment and interact and do all that. Second way is to become a patron. Um, basically buy me a cup of coffee um, and yeah, you get access to uh, ad-free videos, free plans, stuff like that. And the third option is to visit our shop. Right now we have these little wax pots available for sale as well as uh, wax tins, of course, that we always sell. This is kind of like a special thing right now. Um, so those are a couple of options if you enjoy these types of videos. Um, anyway, um, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon. Bye. See you. grain is different looking and this just looked like regular red oak so hard um i mean the white oak some of the pieces i mean it's like a rock more porous it's amazing in some ways that they're actually the same wood they look very different don't they